Hey guys, it's Jamie from Rubicon Models here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted and weathered this two-tone hard edge camo scheme on my SD KFZ251D, which we unboxed earlier in the week. So as normal, we're going to start from a grey primer. Personally, I prefer Alcad's grey primer as it flows nice and easily through the airbrush and provides a good coverage and a good base to work from. I'm going to be applying some modulation to the vehicle using three different shades. And for our shadow colour, I'm going to use Ammo by Mick Jimenez's Dunkel Gelb Dark Base. Now I'm painting this vehicle in sub-assemblies because it makes it easier for me to be able to access the inside of the vehicle and any hard to reach places. Now this shadow colour I'm going to apply to the bottom one third of the vehicle and also along any panel lines or where there's detail. I really highly recommend that Wargamers check out the Ammo by Mick Jimenez paint range as the paints are pre-mixed and pre-thinned, meaning that they're perfect for our needs to paint armies quickly and easily. The modulation sets provide a great base for contrast that's going to make your models pop on the gaming table. They're well respected within SCAR modelling groups and I'm sure that the SCAR modellers out there will have already heard of Mick Jimenez. You can see here what we're aiming for. Before moving on to our next colour, which is Dunkel Gelb Light Base. We're going to use this as a base colour, which means it's going to cover all the parts that remain grey. I would also like to get a little bit of this over the top of the shadow colour as that will provide a pre-shade which will actually make an extra tone in between the two colours. Before finally moving on to the highlight of the Dunkel Gelb using Dunkel Gelb Shine. I apply this to the top one third of panels and on any details that I want to pop. Finally, I paint the seat covers and the steering wheel using Ammo by Mick Jimenez's grey shadow. Now these parts would have been really hard to reach had I fully assembled the vehicle before painting. Once I'm happy with the interior of the vehicle, I glue the top on a mask the interior using torn up kitchen roll. Now for the exterior of the vehicle, we're going to work with the modulation again, beginning with Dunkel Gelb Dark Base. I find Dunkel Gelb a really fun colour in the sense that there are many variations of it during the war and it's quite nice to create German forces where the Dunkel Gelb has slight differences, some being more green, some being more yellow, some being lighter, some being darker. And Ammo by Mick Jimenez actually make a couple of different variations of Dunkel Gelb with these changes in mind. Exactly the same as before, we're going to use Dunkel Gelb Light Base as the base colour, applying it to all the parts that remain grey. Finally, we use Dunkel Gelb Shine as the final highlight for the exterior Dunkel Gelb. 
Now you might think this color looks too light, or that the differences between the different colors in the modulation are too stark. But once we weather the vehicle, they're going to be blended closer together and dulled down. Once happy with the dunkel gelb, it's time to begin masking for the hard edge camo. Now I'm going to use panzer putty, which is very similar to silly putty or bionic putty. You can also use play doh or even blue tack, anything that is low tack and won't pull the paint off your miniature. And it's also waterproof so that paint won't seep through it. The pattern and how much camouflage you apply is completely up to you and in a moment you'll see how much I chose to go for. I'm going to be painting a lot of these half tracks up so you're sure to see different variants of camouflage. Once happy with the placement of the putty, I use Ammo by Mick Jimenez's Dark Green for the base colour of my camo stripes. Being sure to paint right up to the edges of the Panzer putty, as otherwise it would have a soft edge effect. This colour then receives a quick highlight using Ammo by Mick Jimenez's Light Green. For this miniature I used my Iwata HPC Plus for all the paints involved. Now the HPC Plus has a small enough needle that I can get fine lines and a large enough needle that I can cover large areas smoothly. The miniature then receives a quick coat of testers dull coat varnish in order to protect it before working with enamels. The first enamel we will be working with is Ammo by Mick Jimenez's Free Tone Tan Filter. I thin this roughly one to one with odorless thinner and apply it as a filter over the entire vehicle. Now a filter is different to a wash in the sense that we do not want it to pull so we keep moving the pigment making sure that it doesn't settle in any areas. It tints the colour making the modulation more blended and bringing the two shades of camouflage closer together. Once this is thoroughly dried, I apply burnt umbar to all the wooden areas, including the tools and the MG stocks as a base coat. Please remember at any time guys that you can like, comment or subscribe. You can also comment a question below and I'll do my best to provide you with an answer. Tracks, metal areas and wheels receive a base coat of Vallejo model air German grey. before returning to the wooden areas to give them a highlight of beige brown from Vallejo model colour. Metal areas then receive a quick dry brush using Vallejo model colour gunmetal grey. The contrast between the non-metallic and the metallic provides a great visual aid
Rubicon model decals are then applied using tweezers and water, taking time to make sure that they are in the correct position. Vallejo model colour decal medium is then applied to the decals. This alcohol based product melts the decals to the miniature, hiding the line between decal film and paint, and also meaning that the decals won't be moved by any clumsy handling of the miniature. A Liquitex Ultra Gloss Varnish Coat is then applied to the vehicle. We are now going to wash the vehicle using Panel Line Wash Deep Brown from Ammo by Mick Jimenez, applying it to all the panel lines and recesses. Do not worry if you get it in any areas that you don't want, as the benefit of using an enamel wash is that you can remove it later. You'll see this shortly. The next step is to take Ammo by Mick Jimenez's Enamel Odorless Thinner, dampen a brush slightly and remove any excess wash. Here you can see how easily it comes off all the areas where I didn't want it and stays in the recesses. I like to use a flat brush for this as it moves the enamel wash off easier and I can even create some streaks by using the flat brush to drag that wash out. Next, I use Ammo by Mick Jimenez's Streaking Effects, notably Streaking Grime, Modern Vehicle, US Grime, and Light Rush Streaks, and begin applying streaks to the vehicle. When working with enamels, I always recommend that you use synthetic brushes, as enamels can be very harsh on your more expensive Kalinsky Sable brushes. The streaks will simulate the effect of dirt and grime being pulled down by rain on the vehicle. We then take a flat brush, dampened with enamel odorless thinner and feather these streaks out. How much you feather these is completely up to you. The more white spirit and the more passes that you make, the less noticeable the streaking will be. Once those streaks are dry, I'm going to apply some chipping to the vehicle using Vallejo Model Air German Grey and a piece of Blister Black sponge. Dab most of the paint off and then lightly dab on some chips onto the vehicle. Taking note to apply it to the areas that would be most accessed by the crew, such as the engine hatches at the front and the side compartments where the crew might have their hands or stowage. Finally, we're going to start weathering the tracks using various splashes and pigment from Ammo by Mick Jimenez. We're going to use Dry Step, Turn Dirt, Europe Earth and also Dark Earth mixing them in different amounts to create different tones. I stip all this onto the road wheels and onto the tracks. As we are using an enamel based product, the splashes, as a binder for the pigment, it can also be removed using enamel odorless thinner. 
Someone working with the tracks in this way, bear in mind that you can take it off if you do not like it. Also, do not be afraid to mix different products actually on the vehicle in order to create different tones on various different parts of the vehicle. The more different tones you have within the mud, the more realistic it will look. Different parts of the mud will dry out at different speeds to others and it's important to keep that in mind. I also apply my mud mix to the interior of the vehicle to simulate the crew walking around. Finally, I take some of that mud mix and lightly blow on the brush using my airbrush to simulate mud splatter. The vehicle needs a final coat of testers dual coat varnish and it's ready for the tabletop or display cabinet. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps me out. And I'll see you next time when we'll be taking a look at the SDKFZ 25122. Please remember to check out our Facebook page where you'll see the latest sneak peeks. Also check out our community group where you can receive feedback or answers to questions.